task we're going to talk about right now is inspecting lifeboats. Utilize your PTC checklist and your student training guide. We're going to go through and cover all our items. First things first, hazards, PPE, cautions. Your general PPE that you wear for your inspection or exam is perfectly acceptable. If you're going inside the boat, you may or may not be required to wear a life jacket depending on the facility or the vessel you're at. Also, before you get in, you want to make sure the boat is properly secured and has harbor pins or safety pins in so that the davit won't release while we're standing inside the boat. One of the first things we need to do prior to inspecting the rescue boat is verifying type approval. Verify this through their Solus Safety Equipment Certificate or on their COI and verifying that the data plate on board the vessel matches both certificates, depending on which one they have. Then once we come out, before we even do anything, we're going to verify the rescue boat is stowed properly. On this one, you can see it sits in a self-releasing cradle. So before we climb in the boat, we want to verify that this pin, safety pin, is here. If not, this shoe lever will drop and the boat can fall out. We want to be very careful that this is set up and safe so that when we come in and if we're moving about in the boat, it doesn't release and slide out and throw people in the water. While we're here, we're also looking at the general condition of the fiberglass of the boat, verifying that there's no spalling, cracks, any obvious signs of uh, a damage, a collision damage. We're also verifying the retro tape, any markings on the outside of the boat, our condition of our man ropes. This is important to look at. When you have polypropylene line like this, it can get gray and faded. It looks like it's sun damaged. The trick is to twist it upon itself and you shouldn't see it fray apart. If it starts to fray apart and start spraying pieces of line around, usually a sign that it needs to be replaced. This looks pretty good. So now that we're up and getting ready to get in the rescue boat, we want to verify that the release mechanism, the safety pin gets put in right here. Without this pin in here, I'm not getting in the boat. We we'll also want to make sure that there's markings inside the boat where we have our fire extinguisher, our data plate is located up forward. We'll verify the information on there. We'll also verify the retro on the top side of the rescue boat. Verify that everything conditionally looks good, that everything steering works. They have their safety lanyard, their engine kill switch. And verify any equipment that's required to be on board their rescue boat is actually placed on board. One of the last things we'll do when we're inspecting the rescue boat is to verify operation of the rescue boat engine and the steering throttle controls. Typically you'll find an outboard engine. Outboard engines require cooling water when they run. If you run this thing dry for even longer than 10 seconds, you risk damaging the impeller and then a lot of maintenance is due. One of the things with these is they have to be ready in all weather conditions. So you may find them with a, a heater style blanket on it or it may be a diesel outboard. This one happens to be a gasoline outboard. This one, if in cold weather environment, may have a uh, heater blanket installed on it, which is fine. They just have to be able to take that off before they start the engine. Prior to running this, they'll either hook up what we call bunny ears or rabbit ears. This provides water to your cooling intakes here. They may have a bucket or a drum that they can stick under and actually submerge the lower unit of the outboard so that when they run it, it provides cooling water. Your cooling water will typically come out in a stream that lets them know they have good flow. That's something you want to verify when they run the engine because we want to let this run for a little bit too, not just start it up, do our throttle checks, and then shut it down. We want to let it run for a minute and verify that it will stay running, especially when it's cold outside. So one of the things when we're doing our testing and looking around the rescue boat, we want to verify that we have the correct people with us. The people that actually are involved in the maintenance or involved in looking after the equipment. Part of what we're doing, the big part of it is crew competency. We want to verify that the ship's crew knows how to use the stuff, knows where the location of the stuff on board is. So typically you'll find a, an engineer will come up to run the rescue boat engine while the third mate or whoever's in charge of the rescue boat will operate it but we want to verify that we have the right people with us. Typically, if you get people who don't know what, or don't touch this, or aren't involved, you'll run into problems. So to summarize our task for rescue boats, we use our PTC checklist, make sure we hit all the stuff. We talked about verifying type approval. We talked about verifying stowage condition. We talked about verifying condition of the lifeboat itself, the markings, the data plate, 
We talked about hazards, cautions, PPE to wear. We also talked about witnessing the operational test of the engine, the steering, and the engine kill switch. If at any point through any of this, you have any questions, make sure you write them down. Anything you want to know extra, write it down and talk to your local VO.